Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a very special infinite radical. So we have the square root of 2 times the cube root of 2 times the fourth root of 2, so on and so forth. We're going to evaluate this expression numerically. Obviously, this is an expression that converges. You're going to see why in a little bit. And the result will be a little surprising. Okay, so think about different alternatives. What would happen if the indices did not increase, like the square root, the cube root, and the fourth root, and so on and so forth. Obviously, that's going to make the number smaller, which also means that our expression is actually going to be less than the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which, which actually converges. And you probably know that this converges to 2, because if you uh, evaluate this by setting this equal to x, and then squaring both sides gives you same thing inside, which is x, and then you get x squared equals to x. Obviously, this is a positive quantity, and from here you get x equals to. Simply put, we didn't get into any proofs or of convergence or anything like that. But, so we could also define it as a sequence, obviously, and look at the limit that way. So our expression is actually going to be smaller than this, because when you think about the square root of 2 or cube root of 2 as opposed to square root of 2, you're talking about uh, square root of 2 being 2 to the power 1 half, the cube root of 2 being 2 to the power 1 third. Since 1 third is smaller than 1 half, it's actually going to be or produce a smaller number. Anyways, so how do we evaluate this? Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. I'm going to show you a graph at the end, which is also uh, kind of interesting. Okay, cool. Now, when you have something like this first, I'm always trying to solve a simpler problem because it's important to understand the process behind something complicated. Sometimes you, you want to look at a simpler problem. So we can obviously set this equal to x and so on and so forth, but we can also think of it that, this way. Alternatively, we have the square root of 2, which can be written as 2 to the power 1 half, and this 2 is actually the square root of 2, the square root of the square root of 2. Think about it like this one and that one. So it's kind of like 2 to the power 1 fourth. And then this one is actually under 3 radicals, so it's 2 to the power 1 eighth, so on and so forth. So these are basically, the exponents are powers of 1 half. So we can write this as 2 to the power 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, so on and so forth. And this is just a geometric series whose sum can be evaluated as a1 divided by 1 minus r. But this is just 1, so the answer is going to be 2. So this, that's just another way to look at it, and it's actually very helpful in our case because that's what we're going to do here. So, let's go ahead and write our expression using exponentials. And obviously, I don't want to use a 4 there. I want to use a 3 and a 4 here. Okay, here we go. This is the fourth root and so on and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and write this expression similar to what we did here. So, first of all, we have the outermost 2, which is 2 to the power 1 half, right? And then we have this 2, which is under two radicals, square root and cube root. So think about it. If you have the square root of the cube root of 2, what does that mean? It just means 2 to the power 1 third to the power 1 half, right? Think about it this way. Square root of, okay, I didn't have to write the 2 there, but anyways... Okay, the radicals are disappearing. So we can write this number as the square root of 2 to the power 1 third or 2 to the power 1 third to the power 1 half, which is 2 to the power 1 over 6. Make sense? In other words, we're multiplying these numbers and that just becomes the index for our root. So in other words, this becomes 2 to the power 1 half times 1 third. All right? And then the next one is going to be 2 to the power 1 half times 1 third times 1 fourth, so on and so forth. So this should give you a good idea what our, the pattern is going to look like. Because if you look at this expression, you get 2 to the power. Now, considering the other ones like 2 times 3 and 2 times 3 times 4, we can basically write this one as 1 over 2 factorial, this one as 1 over 3 factorial, this one as 1 over... 4 factorial, and so on and so forth. And then, by multiplying these numbers, basically we are adding the exponents, right? That gives us 2 to the power 
1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. And you kind of get an interesting sum. So I'm going to pause here. I want you to think about this, and I'm pretty sure you guys already figured it out. If you dealt with infinite series, especially Taylor's and Maclaurin's and, you know, stuff like that. So that's what we're going to get to. But let's save this expression for now. At least we found some type of expression. We got rid of all the radicals, and hopefully we can turn this into a single number at the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this for now. I'm going to come back to this, but let's go ahead and focus on the exponent. So what is 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4, 4 factorial, so on and so forth? What does this remind you? The sum of the reciprocals of factorials, the consecutive factorials, but one is missing. That's okay. We can take care of it. We can call this S, and then we can add 1 to both sides, and that includes 1 factorial. Or even 0 factorial can be included. Okay, cool. So hopefully I gave you enough hints. Now let's go ahead and focus on this. And I know this is going to be a huge jump, and you might be questioning, like, where does this come from? Okay, just don't worry about it. Trust me, I'll show you what is going on at the end. Okay, so f of x equals e to the power x. So it's a function that is very, very special, as you know, Euler's number, because Euler is super duper uh, amazing. Anyways, uh, I want to write, and functions can be written as infinite polynomials. So I want to write this as a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared. And the reason we write this polynomial backwards is because it's infinite, so I don't have the last term or the first term or the leading coefficient because it's approaching infinity. Anyways, so we're going to write a couple terms, and I want to probably go all the way up to a to the fourth power, x to the fourth power, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be our expression. Let's go ahead and move this a little bit this way. Here we go. And then here's what I'm going to do. I want to find the a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, so all these coefficients, so that I can write e to the x as an infinite polynomial. Get the idea? And here's how we can do it. First of all, when you have a function that works like this, or when you have an equation, you can replace x with pretty much anything in the domain. And obviously, e to the x is defined everywhere, so you can replace x with anything. How about f of 0? Obviously, 0 is very powerful, right? Even though it means nothing, it's actually a lot of things or everything. e to the power of 0, which is 1. And then on the, all the way on the right-hand side, if you replace x with 0, everything is, is going to disappear except for a sub 0. And yay, this is amazing because this gives us a sub 0. So I got our, uh, we got our first coefficient. Let's go ahead and find a sub 1. But to find a sub 1, notice that you have to get rid of the x term and turn this into a constant. And how can you do that? By using derivatives. Great. So let's differentiate. e to the x becomes itself. We get a1 plus 2a2x plus 3a3x squared plus 4a4x cubed and so on and so forth. Now replace x with 0. You get a, e to the power 0 which is 1 and that is equal to a sub 1. Awesome. a sub 1 is also 1. Great. Let's go ahead and take the second derivative, which is e to the power x again. You can do this a million times. But now we get 2a two su two sub 2 plus 3 times 2, which is 6. But let's write it as 3 times 2a sub 3x. And then 4 times 3. Let's write it as 4 times 3 times a sub 4x squared, so on and so forth. Replace x with 0. In the second derivative, e to the power 0 is 1. And that gives you 2a2 which means a sub 2 is 1 half. Okay, we got something besides 1. That's cool. Third derivative. Let's differentiate one more time. I am promised this is going to be the last time. This is going to disappear. This is going to become 3 times 2 times a sub 3 plus 4 times 3 times 2. Notice that this is going to move to the front times a sub 4 and so on and so forth. Actually, there is an x here. Never mind. And then we're going to replace x with 0, e to the power 0 is 1, and this is equal to 3 times 2 times a sub 3, and from here a sub 3 is going to be 1 over 2 times 3. 
Okay, and you hopefully get the pattern. The next one is going to be 1 over 2 times 3 times 4, all the factorials. Amazing. Let's go ahead and place all of these here and write our infinite polynomial. e to the power x now is going to become 1 plus 1, right? Because we have 1 plus actually. Okay, never mind. a sub 0 and a sub 1 are both 1, so it's going to be 1 plus x. Never mind, I have to put an x here. And then x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x cubed divided by 3 factorial. By the way, this is 3 factorial. That's what I'm referring to. x to the 4th divided by 4 factorial, so on and so forth. Now, why is this significant? Well, let's go back to what we had. We are trying to evaluate this. 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. So this is what we need. And how can I get there from here, right? Easy. you got to replace x with 1. Isn't that amazing? Like you just replace x with 1 and boom, you got what you want. Pretty much. So replace x with 1 here. And if you want to call this f of x and evaluate f of 1, that's fine too. Same thing. You get 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. Hey, this is what we're looking for. But guess what? This is equal to e to the power 1. So this is equal to e. So we have 2 plus what we want is equal to e. What does that tell you? What you want is e minus 2. Awesome. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's isolate this. 1 half or 1 over 2 factorial. Uh oh, our graph is coming up. So I got to cover it up. 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus dot 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 is equal to e minus 2. But I was looking for 2 to the power of that for our sum, right? Yay! So this sum is going to be equal to 2 to the power e minus 2. So that's going to be the answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. The graph of what? The graph of a finite polynomial and an infinite polynomial see how they match sort of and this brings us to the end of this video i thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video sorry about the length of the video i try to keep it short but it's been long thank you for your patience until next time bye bye